Uh, I don't know where exactly we're at on this video. We were cutting a uh, 7 8 inch board and bat red oak out of a red oak log. And of course we're going to lose that end. But I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how, uh, how hot should my blade be? How do I know that my coolant is working on this blade? Um, like, how do you know that your water, whatever you're using, uh, water, pine sole, windshield washer fluid, diesel fluid, what, whatever, diesel fuel, whatever you're using. I'm using diesel fuel. Um, how do you know that this, that water is cooling your blade properly? How do you know that that water is cleaning your blade properly? Uh, how do you know that that diesel drip is uh doing its job so and maybe it's a video to i'm gonna ask how i can fix this diesel drip because i don't i don't like it and i'll show you why here real quick I, I like the diesel drip i don't like the diesel setup that i've got with this hose and here's i'll show you why i'm clean up this hose so there's no there's no diesel in here you know it doesn't it doesn't stand in that hose it just drips out of this and falls down there and here's your and here's your drip you turn that little i can't remember what this is called a needle needle valve needle drip valve i don't know and you drip that diesel and then it runs down and slowly runs and and drops on your blade and you can see i've been using the mill all day and that's the buildup that you're going to get with the diesel drip with water you're going to get that build up with pine saw you're going to get that build up with whatever you're running you're going to get that build up with diesel drip you're not going to get the build up over here because you're not that one drip of diesel fuel every second every two seconds is not going to make this sawdust coming out here wet it's all it'll all just fall off water is going to make this jam up with sawdust also but whatever you're using, how do you know it's working? How do you know Rooster's happy? How do you know it's uh, cooling and cleaning your blade? So, wow, well, you can't, I don't know if you can see that, can you? Okay, so there's just that very, very little bit of buildup on that blade. And that's, that's running diesel drip. And I'm betting that I can wipe that off with my finger. All but the very last of it, I can wipe off with my finger. There's there's no, once you wipe that off, I mean, look at all those coming off. All but just that very little bit is chunked on there. There's a very little bit right there on the teeth. But all that's coming off, your blade's clean. That's how you know if you're water, your diesel drip, whatever you're using is cleaning your blade, it should just come right off. There should be no build up on this blade or on the bottom sides the same way. So by doing that and cleaning that blade, I know that my diesel drip is cleaning the blade because everything I rub just rubbed off there will come off once it enters that board. All that buildup will come off once it enters that board. There goes a couple of hen, hen running from a rooster. Now, how do you know that it's cooling your blade properly? How do you know your water, your diesel, or whatever is cooling your blade properly? We're going to run through there. I'm going to get to the end of it, take out my glove, and I'll be able to touch that blade. I'll be able to lay my finger right on that blade. It won't be hot. It may be warm at the most, but it won't be hot. You'll be able to just leave your finger right on there. Now, here's the problem that I have with the diesel drip. I'll show you that real quick. So when I'm, when the uh, geez, blade guide roller is here or here, I'm fine. That, that uh, drip stays tight in there and allows the, that one little drip to run right down the base of this tube. 
However, when I go, and this this tube is just loose up here. There's no nothing holding it. When I move it all the way out, actually I'm okay there too. Because this tube didn't move much. Oh see, it pops off. I haven't got it, I haven't got it fixed. But this tube usually slides through here. And uh, I don't have it, I don't have it properly fixed yet. I don't have it screwed on because I'm not happy with it. Is what I'm saying. You just take one of these little band clips, whatever you call them, screw clips, and screw that on there, and it'll be fine. It'll tighten up. I've got the top tightened up so it doesn't fall off, but I haven't got the bottom yet. So I don't know if I need to make this hose. I don't know if I need to make this hose stationary or if I need to make this hose shorter if I need to make this hose longer I don't know yet when I go back and I close that now that now that this has pulled this out here this far when I go back and close that to to cut on the log now I hope you can see that that diesel drip will not it will build up right here all that all that uh, diesel will build up right here and it won't flow into there until it fills up this tube. So I've got to come back in and I've got to raise this up to there to where it will flow back, just gravity flow into my blade. Otherwise, see, watch this. I'll just turn this diesel drip on full blast. And that diesel fuel will come out and it'll set in there. You see it? It's just setting in there. It's not, it won't run over to drip out because it's got to go uphill. So there's no way gravity can do it. Once I bring this up, then it all runs on the blade at the same time. And I don't like that. So I need to, what do I need to do is what I'm asking. Do I need to make this stationary and this longer? Do I need, I thought about pulling this out, you know, and putting a bar up here or something with a spring to hold that tube up. I don't know, it, it, it doesn't want to, it's to ride over here. I'm fine, well, I'm not fine. Let me move this hose. I've got this, this hose is tight in here right now okay now I got this hose so it's free in here see this hose is free in here now so normally when I move this hang on here that hose is free and I'm okay when I'm way over there when I'm all the way open when the, the throat of the mill is all the way open I'm okay and there, I'm no longer okay. Because this hose doesn't, isn't going back up in there on its own. So now all the diesel will be in there again. So then I move it up to here, and I'm okay. But I've got to manually move that up there. And the only reason it's catching is because of that blade. That uh, little clip, the middle metal, whatever the heck you call those. So you understand what my question is? How do I... If I screwed this on, it would move this whole hose over. How do I stop it from doing that? Not coming apart. I know how I stopped that. I put a clip on there. I want to know how I stop this. Once I get it open, how do I stop this? I don't want that laying down in there. I want that to be up. So, like I said, I don't know what to do to fix that. I've just got to manually push that hose back every time and put that on a clip <clears throat> I don't know how to stop it from doing that and I'm not moving this a lot and it's not that big of a pain in the butt that's why I haven't stopped everything and tried to figure it out I just push it back up in there every time and it works but there's got to be a way to fix that alright let's run this blade through that uh, red oak it's about 12-inch red oak, um, and we'll see if this blade 
is cool when we get to the end of that. I really don't want to run it with no diesel to show you how hot it is because I really don't want to touch it after I do that, but we may do that too. So now the other one that people always tell me is uh, they don't want that smell, that diesel smell in there, um, on their logs. And man, I worried about that. I was totally against diesel and I was totally worried about the diesel smelling up my lumber. I wouldn't care if it smelled up this red oak. I, I smell red oak. Oh, my glove. My, that's a bad smell, my glove. I, I smell red oak. You got your, you got your app downloaded, your smell of vision app? Smell that. Huh? Smell like red oak? Or does it smell like diesel? There's no, there's no diesel in that lumber. I'm getting some, is that the heart? No. There's no diesel on that wood. There's no diesel in the dust. There's no smell left. I cannot smell that. I can smell my glove. You want to smell that? That's nasty. Ooh, that actually smells more like diesel than because I had it on that blade, but that doesn't smell. I can smell diesel on my glove because I wiped that blade, but I can't smell it on there at all. So that's how you know that your, I got that shut off, that your diesel drip is working, your blade's cool, your blade's clean, there's no buildup over there. Uh, the bottom of your blade's clean, your wood, uh, when you come out of the, your blade comes out of the end of the wood, it's cool, and there's no smell on your, on your sawdust. That's how you know your diesel drip's working. Now all I have to figure out is a way to, to move this without it, you know, without it having the loop there, so it'll gravity feed. I just got to figure out a way to. Hold that up every time without I've been playing around with this so much without there being a dip in there to where my gravity feed will still work because that drip is just a gravity feed. Of course, your water is just gravity feed too, but it's usually on full blast from your tank, from your uh, valve up here. That wood miser sent you. I, I replaced the wood miser one with a regular garden hose put this garden hose on here and this here leaked for a while I had a little bitty leak out of here for a while dripped down here I did not like that I was not happy about that so I replaced this garden hose put the garden hose one on the tank and that tank right there has been in there since I don't, I don't know when <laughs> probably it'll probably last me another six months um the way I cut but that doesn't tell you anything it doesn't tell you how much lumber I've cut so that'll probably last you um well I know I cut um probably 10 logs of four by fours and before that I was cutting uh 17 logs 20 logs uh, two buys and the rest one buys and I cut a uh, thousand board feet of six by sixes um, and I don't even know what all I cut on there what else I cut on there but a uh, thousand board feet of cherry I think I cut through there even so that tank's lasted me a long many many thousand many many logs and it'll last me there's another probably 40 logs worth in that tank I won't you know, you can't let it get any lower than that, so I only have that much left, really. So maybe 20 logs left in that much, and then I'll fill it up. But man, if you're getting 20 logs out of that much diesel and 20 logs out of that much diesel, and that's a five-gallon tank, so you're putting three gallons back in it every 40 logs, three gallons for 40 logs, that sounds about right. That's 
that's cheap. That's cheaper than um, windshield washer fluid, which doesn't freeze. That's probably cheaper than windshield washer fluid. Even when, even in Biden's America, where diesel's, you know, three fifty a gallon. Uh, three fifty a gallon at three gallons, nine, ten, ten fifty, eleven bucks. Um, you couldn't fill that up with windshield washer fluid for eleven bucks, maybe. Yeah, maybe. All right, so maybe you can fill it up with a windshield wiper for five or six bucks. But you'll have to turn it on almost full blast and fill that tank up probably six times with that $5 worth of windshield washer fluid. And now you're up to way over what diesel would cost you. Same with, I mean, I guess probably Dawn isn't going to cost you as much or Pine Sol mixed with water. But pine saw and water, dawn and water is going to freeze out here in the winter. Um, and I'm not changing back and forth from water to pine saw. Would, I can go through um, two of those five-gallon jugs of water a day if, when I'm cutting easy. Maybe three, two and a half, three gallon of those five gallons full of water every day. That's a lot of walking back to the garden hose to fill up. Even if the garden hose is right there, it's still a lot of walking around to fill up. So I hope that explains the diesel drip, and I hope somebody can tell me how to stop this from being the low point. You know, I need it to be gravity-fed all the time, and when it comes out, oh, there I am pulling it apart. When it comes out and drips down like that, the fuel no longer can be uh, dripped in there by gravity. And I need it to stay gravity fed. So let's add one more, one more thing to the diesel tip. Oh, that's just falling out of there. Okay, one more thing to the diesel drip video. Uh, people are worried about their belts. The diesel eating their belts. I don't know what that belt costs. But it's a wear item. It's gonna wear out. I don't know what this dry belt costs. It's getting a little dry in there and cracked. But it's that's 200 hours on that belt and it's fine. And that's 200 hours on this belt and it's fine. Um, but you can just, no, you can't even see any cracks in that one. We see just a couple little cracks in that one. Nothing in this one. Uh, if the diesel is, if the diesel was somehow uh, eating those belts, then I, you ought to have an extra belt laying around anyway for your, you ought to have an extra belt for each side here and you ought to have an extra drive belt laying around in the sawmill shed anyway. Probably in Joe Biden's America, you probably ought to have three or maybe four extra sets and maybe three of those laying around because they're on probably stuck on a ship in the sea so the diesel drip is going to cost me it let's say it is even eating these blades and i don't know that it is i don't know if it's eating them any worse than water i think it's keeping them cooler than the water so i think the water would be letting them those heat up more and you get water on that in the winter and it freezes then you're in trouble so I don't think the diesel is any harder on it than it is. But let's say it is. Let's say the diesel is just totally eating these belts. I'll I'll buy another belt or two to save me the hassle of frozen water, frozen water, and carrying water jugs every three times a day, twice a day. So that's my point on the diesel drip. I guess that's my my take on the diesel drip. I'm not saying you have to use it. I'm just giving you both sides, the good and the bad of it. It may, it may cost you an extra belt. Um, it may cost you figuring out a way to get that gravity feed in there. It may cost you an extra tank here because the diesel is staining that tank. But all those costs are, are uh, trivial compared to the hours you're going to spend carrying water and... Uh, amount of windshield washer fluid you're going to have to buy from wherever. All right.
that's it. Hopefully that's it for Diesel Drip.